Hello everyone and welcome back to the Sedona International Film Festival. I'm your host, Carol Kahn. We are coming to you live, both from Facebook and from the Sedona Performing Arts Center. And joining me now is filmmaker, Hello. <laughs> Sage. <laughs> Sage. Yeah. Sage Mears with the film transfer. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. It's so good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. And not only are you a filmmaker, you're also an actress as well. Yes. <laughs> Moving, you know, I feel like that was a past life, but I still do it here and there when the right, you know, when things come up. Well, you know, I kind of read, I read your background a little bit, yeah. and you have a very unconventional life as yes. far as <laughs> I feel like you're a take charge kind of person, and when you see things and what you want to do, you just kind of go for it. That would be accurate. I decided <laughs> at 17 to pack up my bags and move to Los Angeles. Like, thinking back, I'm like, what were my parents thinking? Why would they allow that? <laughs> um, but yes, I, I have very hippie parents, if the name Sage didn't give it away. <laughs> so... Um, very you know liberal not a lot of like didn't get grounded <laughs> you know um it was very free upbringing well you seem pretty grounded <laughs> <laughs> right now and your film is pretty amazing i want you to uh, tell us a little bit about it okay um it's a little hard to explain without giving it away um it's very cerebral um and it's surrealism and a bit abstract uh, I kind of just tell people, like, if you like the tone of, like, Alex Garland films, so, like, you know, Ex Machina or Annihilation, or if you're a fan of Black Mirror, then I feel like my film fits into that. Where did the idea actually come from to do this? <laughs> <laughs> so the idea was has was just sort of circulating in my head for a while. I, I have a bit of a morbid curiosity for some reason with death. I don't really know where that comes from. Um, and so I, I follow quite a few people on Instagram who are sort of in the chronically ill community. And there's sort of this constant um, thing with that of like waiting to live because it's like they, they're waiting to, to get better or they're waiting to, to get a cure or whatever is happening. And I, I just sort of latched on to that and liked this idea of like here's one person waiting to live and then another person dealing with death <laughs> right right and and that kind of coming together so you know because it I'm going to say I don't want to give it away either it just it <laughs> caught me at the end because it all made sense yeah. it was about an interview process yes so we can say that the right? world's strangest job interview <laughs> right <laughs> Which it was. Yes. <laughs> like from the very beginning, you're like, we are not in a real world. Right, right. And I kind of like her typing on this old typewriter <laughs> that nobody types on anymore. Yeah. And she's typing things about what she thinks about the Him. person who's yeah. being interviewed. And um, he's like, I can see you. <laughs> I can see what you're typing. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, it makes you also think about life in general. Mm -hmm. You know, why are we here? You know, are we here for a purpose? Yeah. If we go, does somebody continue yeah. after us in what we set the stage for? Yeah. So it brought all those things up for me as well, like mm -hmm. trying to have answers for those, mm -hmm. because I think about that too. Like right, I think, I think about we life. all do. Right. I mean, that is, we all are so, you know, tethered by our own mortality and wanting to leave something behind. Mm -hmm. in one way or another or wanting to have a purpose or wanting to have meaning and yeah what what are the and and is one person's life more important than another person's life like how does that all I don't have the answers <laughs> right right but you try to show similarities and differences in the two yeah you know because while the interviewer mm -hmm. was you know kind of relinquishing things mm -hmm. which was really hard the other the interviewer was almost making her do things that left her mark right. on life. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's pretty much what we were going for, is just this juxtaposition of people and them finding a connection um, and him sort of helping her in his, in his own way to help her feel like it was okay to go. And then her, of course, helping him in, you know, the sort of reveal at the end. <laughs> <laughs> So when doing this particular film, has this changed anything about you? I mean, I think as a filmmaker, since it was my first film, it's just given me a sense of confidence. Like it just was such a, I learned a whole lot doing it, but I don't know if the subject matter itself, I guess I got a lot more knowledge on that subject matter mm -hmm. and sort of like feel like I know 
information I should never have known. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm like a fake scientist <laughs> or like a fake doctor. <laughs> Trust none of my medical advice. <laughs> well, that kind of goes like into your acting career. Right, exactly. <laughs> So do you miss acting at all, or are you pretty much settled into this filmmaking role that you enjoy? I really enjoy the control of filmmaking. I think for me, I am a bit of a control freak, and it was really challenging as an actor because you never really get full say in anything. It's like you you don't get say on what jobs you book and what jobs you don't book. And then once you book them, you don't really have say on what you're going to wear and how they're going to do your hair. I mean, maybe when you're a huge celebrity, but I am not. (laughs) Um, And then, of course, you can love a take that you do, but that doesn't mean it's going to end up the take the editor uses or the director uses. They might cut half your lines, you know, and so you're just constantly, I just was constantly feeling like I wasn't getting enough from it. So, I mean, I think if someone wanted to suddenly hand me, you know, parts that go to, like, Emma Stone and Jennifer Lawrence, yeah, here, I'm in. <laughs> but, like, the, the sort of tears up didn't have enough control to sustain me as a creative. So have you found, and what, what did you find as far as challenges in switching your role to now creating this, this particular film as well? Um... I mean, for me, since I wrote the film, there was challenges in the writing process, especially because it is a film with a lot of metaphors and a lot of symbolism. With a reveal at the end, it was tricky to find that balance of just like, how far do you push it? Like, when should the audience catch on? And then not wanting them to be completely confused at the end and still just like, what? (laughs) So that was challenging. Um, But as far as like coming from it, not I think because I, I am an actor, like the story and characters is the easy part for me. Like being able to dive in with other actors and be like, okay, I need you to go here. <laughs> like I need this from you. Or, or like that line wasn't truthful, let's do that again. I think I pick up on that stuff really easily mm-hmm. because that's my background. But then the technical side is still overwhelming to me. I had a co-director who was amazing and he went to film school and is very much like uh, more in the, you know, like technical side. So he definitely like really helped with that and then I was able to focus on the actors and the story and making sure that all came together. Mm -hmm. One of the lines that you used in there and I'm trying to remember it but it had to do with was it the first time you hear your name? Oh yeah it was a quote. Mm -hmm. Yeah so what is um so tell me that again. Uh so it's they say you die twice the first time when you stop breathing and then the second time when a person says your name for the very last time. Which was really interesting because I've found that people see that quote either as um, hopeful and optimistic or really pessimistic. Mm -hmm. Like some people see it as like you go on and then other people see it as like you're completely, there's, it's the end. So it's it's been interesting how people view that. How do you view it? I definitely was more on the pessimistic side of it. (laughs) I saw it as like, and then and then you're, you're gone, there's nothing else. And um, the lead actress in it very much saw it in the positive. She was like, no, it's hopeful. Like, someone says your na- you get to keep going. Like, your name's out there. Like, as long as, as, long as your memories are there, you're still alive. Mm-hmm. So, but was- I am more of a pessimist. <laughs> so. <laughs> I didn't get that in the film, but it was beautifully done, be- beautifully orchestrated. Thank and, you, you know, I, just well done from the subject manner and what you hope to accomplish you did so it, thank you very it was much very well done so thank you for bringing that to us yeah and how could people find out about the film and is it showing again here yes it's showing again tomorrow night so wednesday at seven um we have a website it's just transferthemovie.com uh, so you can always check in there for updates and things like that and it's still doing a festival run so you know we'll see where it goes and eventually I'm sure it'll be online awesome yeah well it's so nice to meet you and thanks nice to meet for you being as well here. thank yes. you so much thanks, Sage. <laughs> and we'll be back with more from the Sedona International Film Festival after this